So I'm Carl. Uh, I'm a full stack developer at Sticky World. Um, I like cats. Uh, before that, I was researching optimization and dynamic model level graph and visualization. Yeah, good luck for that. Uh, so I've only been working with uh, web development for two years, only one of which may have been React and less than that for Redux. So you have to bear with me if I don't explain things thoroughly because I have no idea myself. So it's all kind of just rolling with it. So, first up, well, I guess I should introduce the talk. This is just to talk about the, uh, the tools and the libraries that I've used whilst working on React and Redux. They've been somewhat useful to me in the past year or so. So first up, we have React Router. Uh, this is just really a tool to sync your UI with uh, your URL. So as you can see here, you have multiple routes. You will go to your browser in these routes and it'll just load the components that you've associated with it. <coughs> Pretty straightforward, can't really go wrong. Next up, we have React Bootstrap because it's really easy and no one likes to put passes everywhere. So this is just uh, kind of a general slide. You do have um, multiple framework bindings, so for example you've got material, you've got components, you've got all sorts. Basically you just search React and whatever your UI components are and it will come up with a library that you can just use the components and it will lay it up for you. Quite easy, you don't have to worry about putting classes everywhere, but overriding it can be a bit of a problem or an annoyance. But anyway. Uh, all hell are overlord, Dan Abramov, who created Redux. Uh, he also introduced React Hot Loader. <coughs> This is a nice tool that allows you to modify your, your components, your code in real time, and it'll update in the browser. This error may be from that, we don't actually know, because we couldn't figure out what was uh, a hot loader and what was just React. So if you do use it, you might see this error a lot, because it just froze any time you have an error in, your, in, in one of your components, which is not fun. Uh, it wouldn't be any kind of framework if there wasn't any kind of testing to support it, so Enzyme does that quite nicely for us. Uh, Enzyme includes a shadow renderer, which is quite nice. It allows you to shadow render your components, so you can just test the logic of your application to make sure the right components are loading at the right time. Which, yeah, may never work. Um, <laughs> so moving on, Redux. Has anyone who uses Redux? Wow, less than the React. Shame on the rest of you. Um, so as the guy said, it allows you to uh, create one store for everything, one store to rule them all. Um, and you can modify that store by uh, dispatching actions, which go to reducers, which will then modify a store and turn a new store. And it's generally a much nicer way to use than massive components at, your, at the top of your hierarchy. <coughs> React Root to Redux, moving on from React Root to Redux, the React Root to Redux allows you to store the uh, URL at the same time as your state, which allows you, uh, which gives you uh, the option to go backwards and forwards through time. So for example, if you have a client that can give you the store or something, you can go back in time and see what changes they make, or who knows what. <coughs> Redux Dev Tools, uh, who uses this? Wow, the same people that did Redux. Uh, never mind. <laughs> So this is just a nice way of looking at the action which has been dispatched since uh, loading, your <coughs> loading your application. It's quite a nice way to debug uh, any Redux actions to make sure that the payload is what you expect it to be, and if not, you can see what the errors are and what's broken. Uh, Reselect is one of the nicer tools that we've used. It's for, well, it, it generally just gives you some information that, uh, well, it's <laughs> a bad way of explaining it, really. Um, so for example, you start your app, you load a whole load of data, you might load a load of users, you might load a load of components, uh, components? comments. Um, and then say for example, you needed comments with the users integrated into that. You could reuse a, a selector to merge the two. Or you could use a selector to just uh, pluck information from some of your store. So it's quite a nice way to <coughs> uh, load data and just get stuff from it. And it's kind of cool, check that. Uh, Redux Saga. So, a guy roughly mentioned Redux Funk, which is used for async uh, actions. Um, Saga takes a nice step forward and uses generators so that you can write synchronous code as <coughs> asynchronous code as synchronous code. So, as you may see in the example, you will fetch data, you will uh, put the action, so you'll fire another action to say this data should go into the store, then you might 
have uh, another effect of that, so for example, show a system message, and it's, uh, you can write it in a nice pattern which is easier to read, <coughs> instead of having thousands upon thousands of callbacks. Uh, Redux Act is, uh, is a wrapper for creating actions, uh, well, action function, action creators, as it suggests. Um, it allows you to write functions which will dispatch your actions for you, and allows you to make, uh, instead of using strings uh, for your Redux actions, it allows you to just use the functions themselves so you have less typos and less strings everywhere because that's annoying. So that's kind of it, a very fast lightning talk. Hopefully I'll enjoy you and hopefully I can go now.